Okay, this is meant to be a quick video, so I'm going to try to uh, not spend too much time rambling on, but it's going to be about generating com combinations and permutations when programming. Uh, but we're going to start off looking at this from a mathematical point of view, and then we'll move on to the programming part of it a bit later. Okay, so what are combinations and permutations? Well, sometimes we count in mathematics, and this is usually uh, how it's introduced, you know, via counting. It's easy to just list off integers, you know, anybody can do that, but sometimes counting isn't so easy. For instance, imagine if you had a race with 50 people in it, and you wanted to find how, how many different ways, you know, the top 15 people could finish, given all of the people in the race. Well, counting something like that is actually pretty difficult and time-consuming. I mean, how many, how many possible ways are there for people to finish? Like, doing even something like that would take forever to figure out. Um, and we have two basic types of things that we're going to worry about here. We have combinations and permutations, and they're available in two basic flavors. That's with re repetition and without repetition. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in just a minute. Also, we have um, some basic formulas that you'll see a lot. You'll see especially this combination notation, and there's actually another notation that's um, not shown here, but I, I don't think we'll have to worry about it too much. But these are kind of like the basic formulas for each of them, and you can look more into that if you need to. But since we're going to be talking about how to generate these in programming languages, these aren't really that important. Um, but and you know, and these are our formulas for how to do each of these, which again are not really that relevant for the video that that I'm making right now. But you can see that like this matrix um, that I set up is actually really important. The formulas themselves, not so much. Oh, and this, by the way, is the notation for combinations, like the alternate notation that I was talking about. Um, this uh, in over R in the parentheses right here. But basically, you know, we have those the two situations like I was talking about where order matters and order doesn't, and the two flavors that I was talking about like with replacement and without replacement. And you can set them up in this sort of matrix and see that there are four possible scenarios that we need to worry about. Okay, and that's what that's kind of like the main takeaway from this slide. So for implementing uh, permutations versus combinations, remember that order matters for permutation, order does not matter for combinations. And whenever you're programming, you may have, you know, I mean, you've probably done this. You've probably generated permutations and combinations without even realizing it. And it's not even something you really have to think about too much. I mean, you might need to consider how you're going to store them, because if order matters, you're going to need, you know, particular collections will work and others won't. Um, you know, if order does not matter, you can use probably just about anything. But, you know, it's something that you have to kind of consider. And whether or not you're making a permutation or a combination really is just, you know, based on your own preference. You know, whether you're keeping track of the, the order that the data is in or not. You know, whether you use a data structure that can preserve that or not, or whether you care about it or not, is, is mostly just up to you. Most Most programming languages don't have any formal way of specifying that. So... You know, we have this other problem, which is uh, with or without replacement. So with replacement's easy, just repeatedly pick from a collection, you know. So for instance, if I had like an array, and in the array I had objects that represented cards in the deck, and I wanted to, you know, generate a bunch of cards from the deck with replacement. So in other words, like the actual physical act of taking a card out, recording what it is, and then putting it back into the deck randomly, could just be done by randomly selecting from the array repeatedly for as long as you need to, and that's not really a problem. But without replacement is a little bit more difficult, and this is something that I, you know, had thought about on and off through the years when I ran into the problem. It's, you know, how do we efficiently and non-destructively remove ele elements from an appropriate data structure? And the underlying data structure matters a lot for this, okay? So like in the previous example, an array would work just fine. Right? Like, I mean, and I'm not talking about in any kind of like abstract manner. I'm talking like a straight up C array where you have a continuous block of memory with a bunch of objects in it. You know, if you, if you have to remove an object because, you know, without replacement, you want to remove that object, it, you know, creates a big problem because if you want the array to remain contigu contiguous, then you actually have to fill that hole in. So if we removed, for instance, a card from the middle of the deck or the middle of the array, we would have to shuffle down the remaining, you know, 24, 25 cards to fill that gap. And that actually can be a big performance hit whenever you're doing it frequently. You see this a lot in, um, in game programming, you know, whenever you're removing things from an array like that rapidly in a situation where performance matters, even on modern day computers, that will bog down your system. So like an array doesn't really work there. 
you know, a linked list might have better, you know, better properties, but it will still, um, you know, you have to actually, to pick an element, you'll have to trans transverse half the list over and over again. And it actually is difficult. I actually should not have moved forward yet, but it's actually difficult to actually come up with a data structure that will handle this in like an efficient way. But it turns out I came across this algorithm um, to, to actually do this, to pick things from an array without replacement and do it in a really performant way, and it's actually really easy to implement. That's kind of like what the basis of this video is. So the algorithm is, you know, you use an array, and you set the index to the end of the array. So in this case, we have an array with five elements, and our index here, you know, I have a variable named um, max, I think, whenever I write this. But we set our index variable to five, because there's five elements in the array. We want it to be pointed kind of like to the end of the array here. Okay, and then we pick our, our element via whatever method we want, you know, randomly or whatever sort of, um, you know, picking method that you have. And uh, let's say, okay, so this 2 is our target. This is the one that we want to get rid of, right? And what we do is we actually swap the 2 with the element that was at the end of the list. So if we go back to our previous slide, we see the 6 is at the end, and the 2 is in the uh, the second slot here, you know, or the, the index 1, if you want to think about it that way. And we swap these two. Okay, we swap those two elements, and that shouldn't take, you know, that shouldn't be too difficult for us to do to swap the elements. And then we're actually going to move our index down. So now we're pointing, you know, to the, the last element in the array, the second to last element in the array, excuse me. So now we're pointing to the second last element in the array. And this effectively kind of like shrinks the array, but without actually shrinking it. You know, the array remains the same size. We haven't had to fill the hole. You know, we didn't have to move every single element down one at a time. All we did is we swapped these two elements and then, you know, basically did a, a subtraction right here. And in this case, we'll return the two and then we'll be done. And uh, that's really all there is to this algorithm. Um, so the considerations that we have are performance, you know, like, do we actually need this? Is it really important? And a lot of times in modern day programming, people would say, no, you know, there's no way that we would actually need to use some crazy algorithm. Just, just make even an array, even if the performance is bad, it's probably not going to have an impact. And to, you know, to that, I would say just profile your application and make sure that you're actually, you know, not noticing any performance loss. Um, but then, and this is, this is really the kind of like, um, the thing that I, I think about is like the complexity. This algorithm is so simple, you know, I implemented it and, and it was it was very easy to write, you know, I mean it, it worked fine the first time. I understand that every time you have to implement an algorithm like this, it actually, um, you know, there's always the fear that there could be bugs and bugs will crop up anywhere, you know, even though I think I implemented it correctly and I don't have any mistakes. You know, I may have made mistakes, who knows, so it's always a mystery. But really, as algorithms go, this one is, is fairly simple and straightforward. So, um, you know, this is this is just something I wanted to talk about, because if you understand, you know, how often this sort of problem appears and you can recognize it, then you can consider, well, should I use this particular algorithm? Because for many years, I would run across this problem. And uh, I would, you know, I would say, hmm, you know, there must be a, a better solution to it. And in hindsight, I, you know, I feel dumb for not realizing that this, this sort of thing um, is something that you could do. In fact, there's an idiom in C++, which, you know, is a language that I've used for a long time. And it's called swap and pop, and it has to do with removing elements from an array, and it works in, in basically the exact same manner. So I'm really surprised that I couldn't see it. But after having finally found a solution to it, you know, I thought it was it was really cool. And I was actually recently writing a program to, um, you know, that had to select uh, items off of a market. And there were tens of thousands of items. And, you know, this algorithm actually came in pretty handy. It was a side project. I don't know if I would actually um, um, implement it in a real life sort of situation. But it's just kind of a cool algorithm that I've been looking for for years and finally found. So I figured I'd, uh, and, and actually implemented it into a program. So I figured I'd talk about it here.